Don't worry, guys. The Cox retweeted. Retweeted. <laughs> retweeted. <laughs> right to retweet my car. Look at Carl. Ah. <laughs> it's so creepy. Dude. He's just looming behind Leo. That is that is pretty spooky. Uh. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, my controller turned off. I'm good at this. Turned off because I was busy looking up if I can eat shrimp that I left <laughs> on the counter overnight. <laughs> I made Keith wait for me while I looked that up. She's trying to figure out if she could do it and survive. If I can cook the if I can cook the bacteria out of the she shrimp. She just never I left wants out. to waste anything, even if it seems incredibly unhealthy or dangerous to do so. Yeah. I've got an iron gut. There they all are. Carl's already poking around inside a salad bowl on the counter, glancing up at me briefly. Daxon's the only one sitting, staring at the water in his glass. I sling my rifle over my shoulder. I grab one of the salamander's cups from the cupboard and get myself what looks like an apple banana smoothie. The, apple, the cup itself is labeled for some sort of convention. The exact name of it has been worn away from many washings. As I move to the salad, Carl nudges me. At first I think he's just being playful, but then I follow his eyes. Leo's pacing back and forth by the window, muttering something about Clint. He keeps checking his phone, the wolf pretty evidently, evidently restless as all hell. TJ's looking at him too, his expression difficult to place. He's never been exactly hard to read when he's upset like this. His nervous tick always gives it away. Yet I can't tell what he looks uh, more of, concerned or guilty. I'm usually good at reading folks, so this is kind of pissing me off. I take a seat next to Daxton. I'm, uh, a bit out of the loop here. His big blue eyes shift from person to person. Might be best if you fuck off again for a bit. Seriously, <laughs> can you just explain something for once instead of being like a weird cryptic shithead? I can see lines form along Daxton's smooth forehead as he furrows his brows. His skin so tightly stretched across his body it makes it, it makes even his slightest change of face readily visible. I don't have a clue how the furry tits get my kind of Get my kind gets my kind confused with his. As I grunt and mutter for him to eat my shit, I can't help but wonder if I should bring him up to speed or not. I guess part of me wants as many people as possible to know what happened. I mean, fuck. That's what I've always wanted, right? These fuckers finally acting like something happened and that our little group wasn't just little old Leo, Chase, TJ, Jenna, Carl, and I. Eventually, everybody sits to eat. There's not enough room at the kitchen island for everybody, so TJ and Jenna sit on the counter by the fridge. TJ's not saying much. Alright, I still can't access Wi-Fi or make calls. Daxton, is it? Yep. Were we not taking shelter from Clint, we wouldn't mean to impose upon you like this, so my apologies. You already apologized, Jenna. <laughs> it's alright. He pokes at a clump of almond shavings in his salad. I just want to know what's going on. She looks at TJ, then after a quiet, affirming nod to the lynx, she responds to the salamander. When we were younger, one of our neighbors, our friend, drowned in Lake Emma. She pauses. Actually, they died in a hospital later on, but the point is, we were all there for it. It was a rather traumatizing experience, even for the older members of our sort of friend group at the time. Wow, admitting that you guys are sort of friends. Mm. He speaks in such a plain, even tone, she might as well be reading the directions off the back of a TV dinner. <laughs> Just an awkward choice of uh, thing to read off of, given the, the meme at this point. <laughs> oh, you're oh right. Oh my god. <laughs> 
Everyone, including Daxton, looks incredibly uncomfortable. I bet you Leo doesn't even read the back of the TV dinner. He probably leaves the... He the, just guesses he, how he long to put it in. He leaves the film on the wrong parts <laughs> and doesn't vent. The salamander just nods in faux understanding. Oh. He digs into his salad with such focus, it's like he's trying to read a book in there. So, let's just jump right into it. She takes a big drink from her smoothie, leaving us in anticipation. An antissa. Patient. <laughs> that, that's so annoying. <laughs> if someone did that to me genuinely, I'd probably smack him in the back of the head. <laughs> I groan quietly. Flynn. Fucking what? Do you believe that Chase killed Sydney? What? <laughs> Daxton looks up, letting out a little wisp of laughter, assuming we're joking. As he sees he's the only one laughing, he starts to look visibly tense. Didn't fucking expect her to just straight up and ask me this either. Well, the way I see it, either Chase is lying or TJ is. Or fuck it, maybe they both are and are covering up for each other's asses. But Chase is there. Chase in there was spouting bullshit like a steer's rear. Steer's rear. I point to TJ, who quickly looks away. Threw me under the bus the moment he started squealing. Chase wouldn't lie to me about something big like this, yeah? But neither would you teach. I just... The wolf rubs his paw through the fur out of his face. TJ shifts, looking like he's about to start crying again. I'm not lying. It's still word versus word with you two. And Chase fucked off once... And Chase fucked off once TJ told us what happened from his point of view. Which... Took you long enough, by the way. I hard eye the lynx, but his own eyes are cast so far away from me they might as well be the back of his head. TJ. Jenna rubs her paws on the napkin, wringing it some before speaking again. Tell us about the monster you saw. Oh, come on. Jenna ignores me. Give us as many details as you can, and take as much time as you need. TJ clutches his bowl of salad in his lap with both paws. <clears throat> Looks like he hasn't had a bite. His eyes take on that more reflective quality they always do when the tears are starting to well. It's unnerving on a sort of primal level to see TJ tearing up like this. He's an adult, a grown-ass man, looking just like he did when he was a kid. Well, you're asking him to remember his childhood trauma, so... Yeah, it's not ideal. It reminds me of how little any of us have truly grown up. You don't up. have to... You, you never grow out of crying, Flynn. No. Like, I cry on the regular. I think Flynn has some toxic traits. He does have some toxic traits. AKA, he, step problem one, be an, air, an echo character. No, problem one, being a Gila monster. Damn. They are toxic. <laughs> Literally toxic yes. traits. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Like I said before... Tall, with burnt skin. Reddish, I guess. How tall? Like, almost seven feet? Is it he, fucking Flynn? And he was saying... Chula? Oh. <laughs> Flynn wasn't almost seven feet back then, though. Oh, that is true. But but I was just thinking about Daxton's whole thing about the, the black and orange monster. Yeah. Well, it ends up being him. No, I guess he said he saw a monster, too? Or was the monster Flynn? In his dream? Um... No, I think he just said he saw black and orange, or like a red, red and black, and he realized it was him, which made me think that maybe the black, black and orange is what Flynn looks like. But then he also saw like a the like face with like a hole for a mouth. Oh yes, okay, yeah. So they are separate things. Jenna frowns. How did it move? Really fast, or not at all? It was like like pictures, you know. 
a slideshow that was being fast forwarded. Carl finally looks back up from his hose, the ram appearing increasingly nervous. When I it walked through the water, the water didn't move like a wake. It just splashed out with each step. Tell me about the face again, please. Uh, okay. Teacher's having such a hard time getting the words out, but Jenna doesn't stop. She looks wrapped. Three holes. Two for the eyes, one for the mouth. They weren't like bloody or anything, just empty. Dark. Everyone's silent for a moment. Then, next to me, Daxton rises up to his feet. The salamander walks around to where TJ is sitting, then points to something behind him. Like this? What? Oh. That would do it. <laughs> that is right. He's pointing at the electrical socket? TJ turns, looking at it. Then he twitches as if startled. He quickly wipes his eyes and nods. Daxton stares, slack jawed. Did Daxton also see that? It's well, what he saw that, in his that vision. This dream, yeah. The music. Leo takes a loud slurp from his smoothie. He he only ever eats sexily, <laughs> <laughs> Just loudly and grossly. <laughs> Uh, I'm still upset that they wrote that the mashed potato sloughs off back, like uh, off his face when he's eating the, uh, <laughs> the TV why dinner. Did you remember, like, why did they have to write that? it that way? Uh, There's a dribble of the pink no. liquid stuck in his fur around the edge of his jowls. <laughs> Ew. That's honestly probably the. Of all, of all, I mean, you know, furry. All the furry characters, they're all yeah, hot, you know, food right? going to get in your fur. But the idea of the food getting stuck in their fur does fucking make me upset. <laughs> Uh, guys, am I missing something here? I saw it. Carl, move. <laughs> it's getting, Carl! It's getting weird. He's just looming behind Leo. Oh, uh, what, Carl? That thing. Carl gestures towards the electrical outlet. I give him an incredulous look as we both... As we meet each other's glances for a second. Yeah? I saw a pretty nifty light switch back when I was 13. I looked at TJ. It didn't make me hide the truth about my friend's murder for about a decade. Shut up, dude. I blink at Carl. There you Ooh. go. But not now Leo's being creepy. Close! <laughs> Leo's looking over his horns. Now he looks like that, that picture of them cuddling. Yeah. Where Leo's resting his head between Carl's horns and they're watching something on, an, on like a tablet. He stands up, still staring at the socket. When I crashed my car that night, you remember? I do. Carl didn't want to talk about it for months after it happened. I only found out about the truth then. It was after he dropped out of college. Apparently, it was way fucking past twilight and he was drugged out of his mind. That scabies-ridden fat-ass Jeremy gave him acid in his trailer and he had a bad trip. Carl decided some cartoon he put on, a tiger and a bird. Carl described some cartoon he put on, a tiger and a bird, with the tiger baking the bird alive. I mentioned how vivid everything was, and how fucking Jeremy wouldn't stop laughing. He busted out of there and drove off all hightail-like. While making his way down Route 65, he swerved and hit a pole. The impact would have killed him if he weren't so thick-skulled. And of course, he told his dear old parents about it, and they took the blame for everything. They didn't want him to be tested when the cops showed. It wasn't until a couple months ago he told me, in his drug-addled mind, that he thought he'd driven to Pueblo and picked up Chase. Carl claimed he was talking to him the whole ride back, telling him how college life was going and shit. Stroking his horns, mentioning how he missed him, and wanted him back as a roommate. You know, all the shit Chase never actually said after Carl dropped out. It's, it's, it's the fucking... It's the, it's the tulpa. The tulpa. It's the Chase that, yeah. that is the person you wish Chase was instead of the one that Chase actually is. It's like with Leo. The fucker barely even responded to his messages. 
Who could have sworn he swerved off the road and struck the pole? That he killed Chase, crushed somehow at impact. He wouldn't stop shaking. I made a joke that I would have helped him bury the body. <laughs> Just grim for dot, him dot, too, dot, knowing yeah. what we know. I threw up I threw up later thinking about it. So he, he hurt himself with that joke. Yeah. <laughs> the joke was toxic yeah. to the toxic man. Yeah. The Ram's looking at me now with these really big, sad eyes. I've never seen him like this, sober and fully fucking aware of really bad shit. Usually the moment starts, shit starts getting remotely bad, he tokes till his mind melts the horrors away, as he calls them. There's none of that shit here, that's for certain. I never liked how it make, makes me feel, and Daxton's too nerdy to know any pot dealers. This is going to sound real nuts, but I think TJ is describing with the electrical socket face. It was chasing me that night, man. I saw it. Exactly how TJ described. That's how it moved. I thought I'd outran it. But then it was in the car with me where I thought Chase was, and I hit the fucking pole, man. What a Chase was. Leo looks at Carl with raised eyebrows. I let out a puff of exasperated air. You were tripping balls on acid. So now, now Leo's latching onto that, and every single one of them is had had some kind of experience with this thing, except Flynn, seemingly. You were tripping balls on acid. I looked at the rest of the group. That's why he thought he was with with Chase. Leo's expression furrows. You've done acid, Carl. Yeah. I, I know how it sounds. I thought it seemed familiar earlier when TJ was describing it at City Hall. But that face, it was just like an outlet. Daxton's nodding along with everything Carl says. Flynn, I literally was just telling you about this shit. I saw it in my dream, in the water. It's the second time I've seen it in two days. I recognize it too. Not in a dream or because of drugs, though. She looks over at TJ, who appears even more frightened with the confessions from those around him. When I was younger, well, much younger, I sometimes saw it during times I was really angry or sad. It's the closest thing I've ever had to what my grandmother described as a spiritual experience. When I told her about it, she told me it sounded like a lot like a Wendigo. What? Leo crosses his arms firmly over his chest. The wolf having been the last one who was still actually eating dinner. <laughs> Just going <laughs> do, ahead do, 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 do. Guys, I understand the stress of all this, yeah, but seriously, this is too much. Jenna, you're pragmatic and all that, and to see you going off like this has me awfully concerned. This isn't one of our old VHS horror movie nights. He looks to me now, his voice stern and steady. Sydney is not some zombie thing rising from the lake to get revenge on us spring breakers. He was just a kid, and he died, and we need to move on. Forget? Forgive? I don't give a damn, really. He brings his heavy pop to his face, rubbing at the space between his eyes. His nose is starting to bleed, probably cracking from how dehumidified I keep it in here. That's unnerving. Like, oops, just started bleeding in the middle of this conversation. Yeah, I mean, I guess he is a Gila monster, so you'd want it, like, really, uh, really arid. But what about Daxon, though? I mean, he's probably fucking drying up a little, little salamander. Yeah. It's probably terrible for him to be in this room. I want to believe what he's saying. I'm ready to call these fuckers out on their bullshit. But at the same time, the coincidence of all this is just too much. TJ is tough to read now, but I don't doubt the sincerity of Carl, Jenna, or even Daxon and that they believe what they're saying. I just want the truth. That's all I want. I sigh. I think we should talk to my aunt. Why your aunt? She's good with this sort of shit. I pause. Well... I don't know what this is that's happening, but fuck. I don't know what else to do. Leo just frowns at me. 
I'm guessing you're wanting to go now, huh? You can go home if you want. I know it's tempting now that now that Chase isn't here for you to stalk. I just... You're right, partially. I'm really wanting to talk to Chase alone about all this. The lying and stuff. He shrugs. Who knows? Maybe he's seen the Wendigo too. You have a spare gun I could borrow? <laughs> Do you have a spare gun I could borrow? Jesus, this is really what it's come to? I look at Leo for a long moment. He's been sort of a gun nut as of late, which is real strange, noting how against them he was in high school. You licensed? Yup, open carry. I know what I'm doing. That's not saying much, noting our state has the most lax weapon licensing standards in the nation. That's typical Jenna for you. Reality is gonna be out the window, but she'll still be there thrusting some socio-political bullet point in the middle of it. All my shit's licensed for me and me alone. Leo clicks his tongue against the roof of his mouth. Ugh, this is the time for your buy the book stuff. I'm grabbing one of your flashlights, I'll be in the van. He opens the front door and leaves. I guess we're going. Seems so. Carl and Daxton look at each other. I'm not feeling very good. If you're gonna puke, do it on Dax's side of the sink. You guys have sides of the sink? <laughs> like the little bathrooms that have the separate sinks, like like ours. Do you have like do you have two garbage disposals? <laughs> Why would you have sides? The salamander is already looking unnerved, somehow manages to frown even more. Jenna strokes the lynx's arm, muttering something that I can't quite catch. For a split second, a glimmer of salad. <laughs> a glimmer of salad. I love that. For a split second, a glimmer of a sad smile appears in his face. It diminishes quickly, but... Guess I'm glad TJ is not completely broken. The group begins to head out, leaving their plates and cups on the counter. I linger a bit, catching Jenna as he's wiping her paws off a, on a dish towel. Hey. Yeah? Been trying to meet you. <laughs> you wanted to tell me something? She gives me a look like she doesn't know what I'm talking about. Hmm? She pauses, then nods as if remembering something. I'm happy for you and Carl. Her tone is idle, her mind seemingly focused elsewhere. If he's going to explore his sexuality, it's good that it's with someone he knows and trusts. Who's, you know, experience. What? <laughs> I cross my arms tightly over my chest, squinting down at her. How the fuck would she know I'm experienced? You all know you're a slut, Flynn. Look at your shirt with all the buttons undone. <laughs> it's just raw charisma. <laughs> we ain't a thing. Yes, you weren't ever much for having things in general. She looks out the window, her expression kind of like a mix of distant and troubled. Everyone's filing into the van, except Daxton, who's holding up his phone to the sky, trying to get service, I guess. As I open my mouth to rebut, she holds up her paw. It's not what I wanted to talk to you about, and I suppose current matters are. She sighs. More pressing than would be appropriate to delay for this conversation. Her demeanor seems to, sh seems to shift. Her posture not as full of that holier-than-thou air that she usually seems hell-bent on putting on. I can see Leo behind the wheel now, surely getting antsy. Yeah, Leo looks like it's about to pop a hemorrhoid already. I just want you to know, I understand your concerns more clearly. I grunt. Yeah, well, hopefully my aunt can help me understand yours. I thumb back towards the electrical socket. Jenna looks at it, pursing her lips and scowls. I can't tell if she's just frowning at herself at this point. When all logic's gone out the fucking window, her shtick of being the rational mind here is certainly a challenge. 
With a small nod, she turns, heading out with the rest. I sigh, pulling back the lever on my repeater and watching the clip extend outward. I remember to load it, after all. Here's hoping I don't need it. I push it back, back in and head outside. Who's gonna get shot? It's Chekhov's repeater. Uh, yeah, that is, you know, that is a dangerous sign. There is a gun and a bunch of scared yeah. people. Usually when you introduce and a gun, someone gets shot. Like in Leo's route, they introduce a gun at the beginning, and at the end, Leo gets ex uh, Kudzu gets executed. <laughs> oh, Kudzu. brutally. <laughs> it's like, Jesus I miss Christ. Kudzu. Usually the, the side character doesn't just go out like that. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, I would want to die in some... I would have, I'd have. want to have some bad endings if I was a side character in a horror visual novel. I think, uh, I think that'd be great. You should commission some fan art of some bad endings for you. <laughs> there's a there's a whole, like, subculture of that. People who, like, snuff and weird things. No. The thing about a bad ending is I have last year's Halloween commission with the big monster looming behind me. I like that I one. <laughs> I'm not, not going to draw, like, my character being hanged or something. Being impaled on a spike. Not with a spike. <laughs> Leo's quiet as he drives, occasionally checking the rearview mirror. Everyone else is pretty silent, too. It's weird being in a car with Carl and him just sitting there quietly, not staring at his phone or anything. It's like he doesn't know what to look at and is stuck pondering his own thoughts for a change. I look back at Jenna, who is monitoring her phone for any sign of the signal, that the, that, that the signal will stay consistent enough to get a message out. It's hard to believe it, but she was actually trying to apologize earlier. In her own weird way, of course. Part of me wanted to say I was sorry for what I said about the river. At the river, about how she treats her family. But that would be lying. I'm not sorry for what I said. But I can tell when something hit hard and hurt more than I'm happy with. People dance around shit all the time when so much of this bullshit could have been avoided if people were just honest with each other. I roll down the window and prop my knees up on the dash, craning my neck some to peer at TJ in the mirror. He knows I'm watching him. Hell, I think everyone's watching him. Even with Socket Man as a cover story. We got a name. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping him was... silent about all this is, for so long is just cruel. I was going to make a Rocket Man joke. <laughs> it's going to be a long, long time. Did he truly think not mentioning the fur color of the person in the water with Sydney was for the best? Maybe that he could avoid a situation like this. Our group getting shattered. Well, our group's fucked now. No way in hell I'm going to hang out with anyone but Carl after all this shit. Who else do you need? You don't? You don't need anyone else? <laughs> And it wasn't like it was all peaches and gravy these past few years anyway. The music changed. I think something's gonna happen. It's never good when the party's in the car. No. Like, something bad happens whenever the group's all in a car together. Chase, TJ, and Jenna haven't so much as texted me since they left for college. And Leo... Tch, he used to visit me back at the warehouse when I packed freight. Yeah. We fucked a couple of times, but we seemed to get more and more disgusted with the arrangement. Uh, was it that, or was it when you quoted The Fault in Our Stars at him? Yeah, he was, he was, like, he was like, oh no, I can't, uh, I, I can't, can't do, do this. this anymore. Cringe. Don't, don't stick your dick in Tumblr. <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was me or him, but it was awkward as hell. I mean, I'm not the sentimental type, but when you're being screwed by somebody and they glance away anytime you look at them, it makes you feel like shit. It is sad. Yeah, that's not good. Points against Leo, again. Red flag. <laughs> I eventually had enough. Told him I wasn't his fucking otter to get a fleshlight like the rest of us. He cut me out of his life right then and there. Even stopped visiting Carl. God, he couldn't even have like pretended wow. like he valued their relationship. Like he does not like these people. Jesus Christ. So he just used Flynn as a substitute for Chase while he was gone. Which is funny because and, they have nothing in common. And with that, physically. yeah. But with that, with that gone, 
he literally just couldn't deal with any of these people and just stopped talk- interacting with any of them. It wasn't worth his time at all. Was he fucking Flynn because they he has an otter tail? Not, I mean, it's the, a scaly though, like. Yeah, but they both got like the big, they, they both have the big tails. I guess. The turgid, thick tails as opposed to all the like. Fluffy like, tails? Have, everyone's like, yeah, cat, a ram, and two canines. Well, yeah. He's trying to close his eyes and imagine. Yeah, it's, oh, it's just such a, <laughs> such a stretch. It's like a, a giant lizard man. And a little fluffy otter boy. Yeah, I don't know what the texture would go. Because because reptiles are weirdly smooth. They're not like any of the things that people usually guess. I hate reptiles. When people think that they're like. slimy. Yeah, I think like, they're slimy dude. somehow. It's like no, reptile scales feel weirdly like like stretchy, like squishy skin. Yeah, I. And it feels like ch- the like chase running has also water got strange, kind of un- unpleasant texture where he's got he's like oily. Yeah, he's, he was his fur is just like, like he's not like oily. A, he's not like a soft like dog or anything. He's got like oily like coarser texture. Yeah. So he might have more in common with Flynn than like other characters. I don't know. Getting in, I'm getting into Leo's head. <laughs> I'm, I'm breaking him down Freudianly. Well, I just don't <laughs> think maybe he didn't have anyone else to fuck in general because obviously Jenna. Well, it was Jenna's not even there. So who's there? Uh, Carl. Carl's not gonna fuck him. Like and Micah left. Micah ran away. Micah ran away. Yeah, so who, who else does he have around who's gay who isn't a Brian? Like, uh, it's shitty watching somebody who was once a social butterfly turn into an absolute recluse. Oops. Drink. The first part of this week he was trying so hard to act like his old self and nothing had changed. We were fags and weirdos in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. Of, of course we stuck together at first. But as Carl says, shit's broke now. As we make the turn off of Margaret Street, I spot the familiar dust-covered plastic flamingos that adorn that adorn Audie's, Auntie's yard. The manufactured house was built back in the 80s and still dons this sort of faded turquoise color scheme. She added these pink, diamond-shaped bathroom tiles all along the roof's edge a couple years ago, too. For Halloween and Christmas, she hangs up neon-colored tube lighting, and I swear you can see her house lit up from miles away. I'm not entirely sure what aesthetic she's going for. Carl called it vintage trailer trash once, and I guess that's fitting enough. That kind of sounds awesome. (laughs) Vintage trailer trash. I like it. Artisanal trailer trash. Leo slows the van some as we approach. I don't see any lights on. No car in the driveway. She can't have parked in the garage. Shit's still packed full of boxers of boxes of <laughs> uncle stuff. Boxers of uncle stuff. Ooh. Guys. The salamander pokes the glass of the window next to him, pointing at something across the street. That's uh, Karen's place, right? Our old bus driver. <laughs> oh, it's that, Keith's mom. Keith's mom, that lady who was kind of waiting so bigoted. long for this to pay off. It looks like somebody broke in. Is that recent? The colored glass of the front door is shattered. Piles of Technicolor shards are splayed across the concrete porch. Yeah. Very, as in, it wasn't like this when I stopped by this morning. People are taking advantage of emergency services being out. I hope she's okay. Her car's not here either. They broke her statue, too. The little sombrero chihuahua man statuette she had next to the door is completely shattered. It's smashed into a hundred pieces. Oh, it's like, it's one of those little racist depictions. The... That you see that human that people have the little yeah. sl- sl- the sleeping Mexican in the sombrero. Oh, Samuro. I don't know that one. No, yeah, that's like it's uh there, there's a, what's it called? It's called like a, I want to say it's called a lazy Mexican statue. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're like they're it's just it's a man in a sombrero. Unkind. It's like he's like he's he's got his knees pulled up to his face and he's he's leaning down so you just see his sombrero 
it's like a it's one of those statues that was kitschy for a while but it's just kind of it's just racist the wooden bienvenido sign that used to hang around his neck is split in half and laying in the dirt and it being a chihuahua also seems kind of like you know yeah. like i think it was like bienviento power bottoms <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh, I see Jenna, Jenna's cool with it being smashed. <laughs> Jenna mumbles. I clutch my rifle a little tighter, trying to see if there's any movement going on inside the house. It's completely still beyond the light swaying of pink lace curtains from breeze outside. It's still probably best we speak with the mayor. Perhaps with what's going on, she returned to City Hall? My heart drops in my chest. Yeah, that makes sense. Hopefully the crazy guy is gone by now. Uh, I don't know. She doesn't usually work on Saturdays. Jenna raises an eyebrow at me. It's a fucking emergency. Well, this is quite a Saturday, Flynn. Leo sighs, putting the van into gear. City Hall it is. He's just overtly trying to make them not go to City Hall because it's he's realizing that they're all going to collectively go back to Chase instead of him getting his moment. Oh, so, I f oh yeah, I already forgot. Yeah, because Chase, yeah, Chase is supposed to be locked in City Hall. And, and we don't know if that's still true or not. But it's like he's making himself suspicious by uh, arguing against very a very obvious point that, that Jen is obviously right about. Yeah. Like, like, no, nah, probably not. Why would we ever? Why would she ever yeah, be at no, the, the building like, uh, associated with her as the mayor? It's crazy. Why would you think that? That's ridiculous. 